We'll be diving into the Covenant C2 framework in this video. This is one that has been much requested. You guys have been waiting for this. So here it is. We're going to first start off by understanding what C2s are. I know not everyone is super well-versed in what they are in the first place. Feel free to skip ahead if this is something that you're already pretty familiar with. And I'll show you how to install Covenant and uh, get that up and running. And then the next one uh, that should be releasing tomorrow, depending on when you're watching this video, if you're watching right when it comes out, uh, that one will cover how to actually use this tool. So if you already have it installed, then yeah, feel free to skip ahead to that video if it's available. And another thing I'll say is if you are looking to learn this stuff to become a red teamer or a pen tester, then it's only a matter of time before your hard work pays off and you're ready to start applying to jobs. And you're definitely going to want to arm yourself with the top 10 pen testing interview questions that you need to know to ace that interview. So go ahead and check that out for free down in the description below. So let's just jump right into it. First of all, what are C2 frameworks? Well, I have this really good article here. I wish I knew who the author of this was. I would shout them out, but, um, I'll put this in the description for you guys as well if you want to dive really deep into it. This article, like this blog post in particular, is centered around actually creating your own C2, which I think is a great exercise uh, to actually learn this stuff, even if you wouldn't actually use it on the job. There's a lot of educational value and understanding, because if you build something like this, you're really going to understand deeply how C2s work. So something that I'm thinking about doing, perhaps in this video series later on, let me know down in the section below if that's something you're interested in. But the reason that I'm here is there's some really fundamental aspects of a C2 that are pointed out in this blog that I wanted to highlight just so we're all on the same page here, particularly when he talks about designing a C2 infrastructure. So the basic setup is this. I found this diagram to be very helpful, right? This is us here. We're the operator of the C2. So basically, if you watched a video that I made earlier, C2s are a replacement for netcat reverse shells and stuff like that, simple reverse shells. And they're a lot cleaner way to do it, and they're the way that real attackers are going to use on, you know, their actual, like, when they're actually exploiting targets. Um, and red teamers are going to use this on their engagements as well, as opposed to just your bog standard reverse shell. So this is us here. We're operators. There could be many operators, right? If you're working on a team of red teamers, you know, advanced persistent threat actors, right? There's more than one person typically. So you can have multiple operators. Keep that in mind. The C2 will have some kind of client, uh, whether that is um, command line interface or a web GUI. So Covenant C2 that I'll be showing you how to install uses a web GUI. And it used to have a CLI as well, but I believe that one is deprecated for now. Um, it's not quite up to date. So we're going to be using the web GUI for Covenant in this one. I'll show you how to set all that up, of course. And then you have the listening post, which is separate. It's a separate thing. And you see that here um, based on the fact that it's got its own boxes and you see how it interacts with the implant. So what is the implant? That is um, what you might re hear referred to as a beacon um, or, you know, different... C2 frameworks have different terminology for it. In Covenant, they're called grunts. So that is your implant. So that's what all these things are. Now, how do they actually interface together? Well, basically, it's constantly going to be running. So your, your grunt is constantly going to be listening for new tasks uh, from the listening post. And you issue these tasks using the GUI. So you tell it, hey, I want you to run like a who am I command. Okay, and so that gets sent to the listening post and it gets put in a queue and every so often the implant is going to check with the listening post to see if there's any tasks that it needs to run because there's a lot of stuff in here that is made for the purposes of OPSEC, right? Which means in order to make it more difficult to be detected by you know, defenders, blue teamers, stuff like that, right? That you don't have with your standard reverse shell. So one of the key distinctions is that these C2 frameworks, they're not, you know, by default at least, they're not going to immediately return the results of your command. Like if you're familiar with netcat reverse shells or interpreter stuff like that, you issue the command and you instantly see the response just like you were on a terminal. Well, that is not how these work. They actually only check 
I believe Covenant checks by default every five seconds or so to see if there's a new task for it to run. And then it goes ahead and runs whatever task you have for it. And it responds, um, you know, it sends that result, the results back to the listening post. And then you get the results using your web GUI or CLI from the listening post. So it only works on certain intervals. And you can adjust this too. If you want to be even more stealthy, take a more low and slow approach. Maybe you have your implant only check every hour or maybe once per day, right? So you can really extend this out as needed. But by default, we'll be running all the defaults right now. I think it's about five seconds in Covenant. And I'm just going to show you guys in the beginning how to do this in the most simple way using all the default settings. But keep in mind, and we will customize this as we go through the series to make it more uh, better OPSEC, right? So, But keep in mind that if you're using all the defaults, this is not very stealthy even still. And I'll show you an example in the next video of why this isn't stealthy, and I'll show you how we can actually detect our C2 server from the victim machine and how easy it would be for a blue teamer to determine who we are. And we'll talk a little bit about what we can do about that and actually implement a stealthier approach to this by um, adding some extra, extra stuff to this. So this is the basic flow of things. And this talks about resiliency, right? Because what if with your Netcat reverse shell, what if someone uh, closes out of that application, you lose your shell, right? What if someone shuts down their, you know, their machine? Uh, so there's so many ways that you can lose access. What if they detect you, right? They detect your C2 and then they ban your IP off the network. Well, now you lost everything. So the way you can rectify this is by using uh, redirectors. Uh, I'm going to show you guys some HTTP redirectors in a future video in the series. But they recommend, or this guy recommends, having a short haul listening post and a long haul listening post. The short term one is for your daily activity. The long haul are ones that you very rarely use, but you can utilize it. If this guy goes down, because you know, if you're doing daily activity on your target, well, that's a much greater chance of detection than say like once a month or once a week or something like that, right? So there's a greater chance this guy gets taken down. And if this guy gets taken down, well, you still have this guy over here that can um, reestablish a new short haul listening post for you. So that is why he has multiple setups and multiple redirectors, which can obfuscate the IP address of your C2 because we're not gonna be using any redirectors because we're using all defaults in this video or in the next video, I should say, when I demo this. So we're going to expose the IP address of our Covenant C2 server to the victim, which is not good, right? So that is why you wanna use these redirectors to obfuscate that. That is pretty much the main stuff that you need to take away from here. Uh, if we dive in a little bit to Covenant specifically, I'll put this article in the chat as well. This is some of the specific terminology that you need to know with Covenant. Um, Elite, this is deprecated. There used to be a command line interface. Uh, right now, it's out of date. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that, but Grunt is the name of Covenant's implant that is deployed on targets. So that's something we're definitely going to see. Now, this is multi-platform, by the way. I'm going to show you how to install it on Windows. Uh, maybe in the future, if you guys really want it, I could create a Linux tutorial, how to set it up on Linux. But just know this is multi-platform because it uses .NET Core, which is available both on Linux as well as Windows. Of course, it's multi-user because, like I said, you're probably going to have multiple operators uh, if you're trying to use a C2 framework, but for this purpose, it will work for just one person as well. So you could have one person, you could have many people working on this, uh, API driven, all of that stuff. Uh, I won't bore you with the rest, but because this thing is written in C sharp, by the way, uh, it allows for some really cool stuff like inline C sharp execution. And the nice thing about this versus Cobalt Strike, actually one common complaint about Cobalt Strike is that it uses different languages for the different components of the C2, which can be pretty tricky once you get really in depth with customizing it and stuff like that, because uh, you got to learn a bunch of different stuff. And I think there's like some kind of proprietary language they created um, or a specific language they created as well to work with Cobalt Strike. So 
Uh, I forget what that one's called off the top of my head, but the nice thing about something like Covenant is it's all in C sharp across the board, so it makes it pretty easy to work with. So let's just get right into setting this up, installing this, and uh, getting this running for you. So there are a few prerequisites that you're going to need to get this working. The first thing we're going to need is .NET Core 3.1, and I'll put the link in the description uh, for this so you can pick it up uh, really easily. So let me just, I'll just navigate here and get .NET Core 3.1. Uh, let's see here. There we go. And since this is a Windows machine, we're going to use Windows X64. And you see the .NET SDK is installing. You just click on it there. Install. Let it run, let it do its thing. And then the other thing we're going to need, which I already have since I'm running this on Commando VM, is Git Bash. So that is this thing here. And I'll show you where to get it because by default you won't have it on Windows. You're going to have to go grab it. And if you go to this link, you can quickly pick that one up as well. Put this in the description below. You just click there to download the latest version for Windows get for windows and uh yeah let's see if this is done yet it is so once you have all those things all those prerequisites what you want to do is just go ahead and run your git bash in an elevated prompt so i'm going to right click on git bash run as administrator and now we can go about installing this thing let me make this nice and large for you guys on the smaller devices and let's see where I'm at right now. I'm in my home directory. Um, this is actually a CMD shell here. So I'm going to go into my tools directory in my C drive. And I'm going to pull in the repository for Covenant. So if we type in Covenant GitHub, we should be able to find it pretty easily. Right here, this is the repository for the Covenant C2. And it's really as simple as doing a git clone. So this is the command that I'm going to run. And I guess I didn't really need to come here, but, but if you wanted to know which GitHub repository it was, uh, well, here you go. So what I'm going to do is in this git bash terminal, I'm going to run this git clone command and get recurse submodules. And that will clone it in right here in my tools directory, which is a custom one that I've created for this machine. Actually, Commando VM created it for me. But you can you can clone it anywhere you want. It's completely up to you. So once that's done, I'm going to CD into Covenant uh, and Covenant once again, so twice. And this is what's in this directory, by the way. And the most important part is that it contains the, uh, the files that you need uh, to run this with the .NET command line tool, which should be in your path, should be installed when you installed .NET Core 3.1 SDK. So I should be able to do a simple .NET run uh, to get it going. So this is going to take a minute to, uh, to compile everything, get it, uh, up and running. And once it does, it's going to say this is the URL to access uh, the GUI, the Covenant GUI. All right. And at this point, you'll know that it completed successfully because it'll say Covenant has started. Navigate to this URL here in your browser. And it's creating a self-signed certificate. So we'll probably get the certificate error, which is fine. We'll just accept that and continue on here. So this is what you're gonna see on your initial installation, uh, the prompt to register an initial user. So let's just go ahead and do that. And hit register. And here we go, this is your dashboard. This is what it looks like and we will be diving into this and walking you through all the steps that you need to know to actually utilize this thing 
in the next video, which should be out by tomorrow, like I said, but hopefully you guys are enjoying the series so far. Drop a comment down in the section below. Uh, don't be afraid to do that as always. And I'll see you guys in these technical videos if you are eager to get into some more content.